Hello, and welcome to Calculus 2. Today we have our second lecture, which is on the areas of surfaces of revolution. So we have a function, y equals f of x, which gives us a curve. On some interval, the function is positive, and we revolve it about the x-axis. So what we're doing is we're generating some kind of a surface. It is called a surface of revolution, and we would like to be able to calculate the surface area. So you see, if we take a perpendicular cut, we're able to generate a disk y equals f of x is the radius of the circle and ds is the width of the little strip and so the surface area of that cut, that circular cut is 2 pi y ds if we wish to integrate from a to b for x we're able to calculate the surface area from x equals a to x equals b. And you can see here that we have the hollow shell, which we're calculating the surface area of. The limits for x are a to b. And it is from this hollow shell that we took a perpendicular cut, perpendicular to the x-axis, the axis of revolution. So you can see that the surface area is the integral from a to b of 2 pi y ds. And now we fill in the formula for ds, which we learned in our first lecture, the element of arc length. In this particular example, we're using the form of ds, which has the differential dx as our integrating differential. Remember that there are other forms also which give us a differential of dy or dt for parametric equations. So now we take a look at an example. Suppose we just have the identity function y equals x going from 0 to 1. The surface area is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 pi y equals x. And then ds is just the square root of 2 dx. So we're able to integrate easily, and we come up with the fact that the surface area is the square root of 2 pi. That's the surface area of a cone, a cone whose sides match the identity function y equals x. The radius of the cone is the y value for x equals 1, which is y equal 1. And so we're able to find the lateral surface area of a cone using this technique. Now let's consider revolving a curve about the y-axis. Now if we revolve about the y-axis, we'll have to look at the radius once again of the surface of revolution. And it's going to be determined by the value of x. So now, when we take our cut, the cut is going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. And the surface area of the element is going to be 2 pi x ds. The circumference times the little width of the cut. So here we are. The surface area is going to be the integral from c to d. These are y limits of 2 pi x times ds. And ds is going to be the square root of 1 plus dx dy squared times dy. The reason we use this particular element of length is because we're probably going to be given x as a function of y, which means we want to find the derivative dx dy. 
and see if this will create an integral that we can evaluate. So here's our picture. We're revolving about the y-axis. Once again, we have a hollow shell. Once again, the cut is taken perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And this picture agrees with our basic formula. Recall the parametric form. This is another way of writing ds if x and y are given as functions of t. If that is the case, then we can calculate the length using this particular format of ds. So we really have a formula for the length of the curve in parametric format as the integral from t1 to t2 of 2 pi y ds in the parametric form. This is if we revolve about the x-axis. If we revolve about the y-axis, we replace 2 pi y by 2 pi x. In our next lecture, we're going to do lots of examples using these three particular formulas for surface area. And we'll even write over here, this cell represents surface area.